So, um, yeah, this is Emma Louise Fern Good from, morning, from Barclays. And we've been working together oh, <laughs> for, a few, years for now. a few years now. And I think the, the background you have in learning has, has, um, has really helped us to push, uh, push the envelope on what we've done together to create some really interesting stuff. And I think we've got a, a, a really nice kind of example to show you here today. So um, what we're talking about is using intelligent learning to assess knowledge, retention, and understanding of key concepts uh, through gamification. Uh, the way this, uh, this worked is there were two elements. The first one was a, a, a mandatory training course that went out to all colleagues, I think, all colleagues. Or, yeah, so it's a global course. Uh, and in Barclays, those are fairly large numbers. Uh, and then what we, what we then wanted to do is say, well, OK, we've done that. Did it work? Do people remember things? So can we do something three months later as a way of uh, checking that the knowledge was retained and the concepts were understood? So if you want to start by telling us about the course, Emma yeah. Louise. OK, so um, I work for Barclays um, Chief Security Office um, and that looks at um, and from a mandatory training perspective is providing training on um, physical security, resilience, cyber and information security. So it's quite a big topic. Um, from a course perspective, we used to have four modules. Um, all of which were about 20 minutes and I suppose with most companies mandatory training takes up a lot of time so it's making sure that um, uh, it, we've got a, like a governance forum of getting it on the list for mandatory being on the schedule um, and we were asked to reduce that sort of 80 minutes down to 40 minutes um, so it was quite a huge ask. Um, we're working with Schoolcast, um, we, we've done that um, focusing on the key learning objectives, what is it that people need to know. And again, um, the focus from a mandatory training perspective is making sure that the content is uh, specific and relevant to everybody. But then there are some areas which you'll see in a moment that um, we've got to um, look at specific functions within the business. And that's not actually role specific. You can't determine what you want somebody to know or a, a section that, that you want them to do is based on a particular role. So that goes out annually um, to all colleagues um, and also new joiners. So when somebody comes into the business, they're also assigned that. Um, and we have um, a partial uh, personalised approach. And then we use gamification throughout the course um, as well. And if colleagues don't pass that gamification through the course, then they have to pass an assessment at the end. So if we start with the personalisation element, of this is within the course itself. So how, how did we do that? Yeah, so we've got two threads <coughs> with this. So first is, um, are you um, a line manager? And a lot of this is down to the individual obviously knowing what role they have. Um, and also taking responsibility for their learning as well. So there are some specific areas that we want um, line managers to be aware of in relation to the objectives. So there is a path and they will do a, a specific extra element based on that path. And then secondly, um, we've got um, those people that deal with users, so end user developed applications, um, which have a, uh, an information risk associated with them. So if there are people that are using those, this is a particular um, area that we want people to focus on as well. Now, what we are able to do with this particular area as well is to get the data out the back end of that, so from school reporting. So I can re request a, a report that tells me everybody that um, took this particular section within the course. I can then provide that to the business representatives and they can do a check and anybody that hasn't completed that within the year, we've actually developed the UDA section on its own as a standalone so that then they'll be assigned to that training as well. Because, because we do this on an annual basis, there will be people that potentially could 
uh, start using you just through the year. So we've got a standalone version that the business will then um, mm. assign that to. And I think I'm right in saying that these people can't be identified by job role. No. No, they know whether they use um, a UDA um, and they're actually fulfilling uh, one of these responsibilities as part of the, the, the UDA framework. So that's the personalisation and then we get into obviously the course learning objectives. Now, we always say only have five because if you give people six, they'll forget one and the chances are they'll forget the one that you wanted them to remember the most. So five learning objectives is a, is a very good starting point for any, any piece of content. Uh, and it, it, it helps you to focus on what you actually, your core message. So I, I mean, the, we, do, we don't need to go through these, but we had these core learning objectives. And from these, we built out the scenario-based content. Yeah, so we had high-level objectives um, for the whole of the course, um, and that's also working with the subject matter experts within the business because um, although I'm the uh, per person that sort of builds the course and has the experience of the development and the design of it, from a content perspective we're reliant on SMEs in the business to help pull the content together. So we work with them to say what is it that you want this training to do, what, what should it be doing? And then underlying that, for each of the four topics, we've got sub um, uh, learning objectives. And that's again to make sure that everybody's focusing on the content because it could be that somebody says, oh, we want to add this in. And we say, well, no, because the learning objectives were X, Y, Z, and now we're going outside of scope. So that's, we need to be careful with scope creep. And we need to make sure that we're focusing because we only have that 40 minutes on the key things that we want people to do. So within the course itself, there are 19 questions and they are focused on the key things that either um, are the key risks and threats that we're seeing um, from trends with the data um, that, that we see from an intelligence perspective um, and also um, what the business is seeing maybe um, individually as well. And then weighted against the four topics, um, information security and cyber are our biggest um, weights um, in relation to content um, and also from an importance perspective. And then we have resilience um, and physical security. We don't actually test on physical security. Um, CSO didn't think that there was a, a requirement to do that. So we don't actually test on that particular area, although when we come to gamification, we do. Yeah. So having worked out you know, the scenarios that we needed to include in the course and, and done all of that, work around the weightings. Within the course itself, uh, we, we use gamification so that, I mean, uh, it's very standard to have a, a question within a course, you know, have you understood this? It's a good way of, of teaching people. Uh, but what we, what we do is, is assign points to those questions and it makes them far more meaningful. If you, if you set, tell people, do well in this, uh, in the in-course questions, and you don't have to do the assessment, suddenly they're focused, they're looking at the content, mm. they're not just clicking next to get to the assessment and you know, drinking a cup of tea at the same time. So uh, by uh, allowing people to score points, uh, we could also then show their progress. So it's a, a very sort of engaging experience as you go through the course. Uh, it's been adopted on lots of other courses that we, we've rolled out for Barclays. I think it's very popular. I think with that questioning technique as well, um, it, there's an opportunity, as you say, you know, you don't, you, you're not sitting these questions, they're just not right and wrong. Um, and you do get points for getting it partially correct. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it, there's a, the, the learning behind it because you're getting that immediate feedback. Um, and so if you don't pass and you can see as you go through how well you're doing and whether you're going to have to sit the assessment, um, it just means then that you've, uh, you know, you're learning by the time you get to those, those other questions. And to be fair, the assessment questions are taken from that main body anyway. We only test with 10 at the end, but again, they're focused on those key areas um, that, that we want to focus on for, for that particular period. Um, and then we're able to um, analyse um, the data when we come to do the, the reports on that. So from reporting perspective, as I said before, we're able to see who's done 
the UDA, completed the UDA section, which then goes to the teams and they can see who's, who's um, also completed those sections and they can use it against their register. We can do um, question analysis, and I'm not sure many people within our um, organisation actually do this, but um, we, we are able to um, look at every question and where there is more than um, a question that's got a, an incorrect rate of over 25%. It's really hard to work. I know, incorrect, <laughs> incorrect, 25% incorrect. Yeah. Uh, we had this conversation the other day. <laughs> I did. Uh, incorrect, then um, we will review that question and we'll review that question against the content within the training because it could be that either um, the content isn't cor correct or it's not uh, clarified enough or the question isn't clear enough for them to be able to answer the question. So we'll go through that and we'll either amend the content, amend the question, or amend the question and the content or there's no change, it's just that um, people perhaps haven't um, grasped it correctly or we'll make a call and that won't just be me, that will be the SMEs um, as well because it could be that there's something specific there um, that they, they want to keep. Um, we've got the completion stats as a whole, so I know I've got some of my um, compliant um, colleagues from um, compliance here today so as every business um, reporting on uh, mandatory training so it enables us to uh, to, to review those so um, we have policy and standards which I'm sure everybody does against that so it means we can 99% um, 97% uh, completion rate within within that period with this particular course as well, we have a requirement for new uh, joiners. So we're able to uh, report, um, I think our LMS 6 for 65 days for completion once it's assigned. Um, unfortunately, our standard says 90 days. So we do have to do a little bit of working with the Excel uh, spreadsheet on that. Um, so, uh, but it enables us to provide stats um, and to report where we need to um, on those as well. So we do get um, a lot of analytics out, out the back. It's not as nice looking as you get from Skillcast because all I do is just get Excel spreadsheets, um, learning how to use pivot tables and everything, but you, you can manipulate the data and it tells you a story. And at the end of the day, that, that's what you want. Yeah, so, so, I mean, to sum up where we are at this stage, we'd, we'd sat down, we'd identified what we needed to, to train people on within the course, we'd used some personalization and an element of gamification, and 90,000 people had done it, they're all very happy, we've got some nice analytics, but the, the next question is, well, what next? How can we evidence and measure knowledge retention uh, and know that this wasn't just a tick tick in the box exercise but it had some meaningful uh, evidence of behavioral change and for that we we sat down and we thought we identified the best way of doing it was to use uh, a gamified approach so actually creating uh, what we called the Barclays security savvy challenge um, which was designed to kind of test how much you knew uh, the uh, objectives of this were to measure understanding, identify gaps, reinforce learning, and, and off the back of it, use all that lovely analytics to develop appropriate learning uh, and awareness. The game design, um, I don't really need to go into. It's, it was very similar to the, um, uh, the approach Marina's took, so um, you've seen all of that, that nice stuff there. Uh, and then we get into how we actually built the scenarios. Yeah, so we've got, um, there's 90 questions in this bank, which was quite a bit of a beast uh, to write. The, um, because what we wanted to do was give people um, three goes. So you have uh, three opportunities. Um, because we had this internally, we didn't have um, the automatic leaderboard that Skillcast have, unfortunately. Um, so ours was um, more of a raw, dirty version, and we didn't actually do the leaderboard um, until the end. Um, but from my perspective, we um, a few years ago, um, we didn't when we didn't have mandatory training. One of the things we needed to do was identify 
what the key issues were within the organisation as far as the colleagues were concerned. What is it that they didn't understand about information security, cyber in the first instance. And we worked with a company called um, the Security Company um, and they had a survey um, of about 60 odd questions which was too many for us because we wanted to get it out there um, and we were talking about comms earlier getting pushed back up from comms about doing communications out um, and we were um, it, we wanted to get it out to a, as many people as possible so we reduced that down to 17 questions um, around information security and cyber um, we did it in five languages because at the time we had the branches out um, in, in country uh, as well and we got a lot of good data back from that and what they did was enable us to um, identify um, the key areas that people uh, were lacking in relation to knowledge, what things concern them on a day-to-day -day basis. And we used that to actually help build the content of the training because there you've got your business side of things of what they they need to do, but then you've got the colleague side, what is it that they feel that they want more support with. We did that in 2013, which then helped us build that, and then we did it again in 2015 to see whether the dial had moved and it had improved. Um, we got, again, good analytics off the back of that, and we could see that it had moved. But there were two things that we knew um, that, uh, from a business perspective, that there were still issues with, and that was backed up by the data that came through from colleagues as well. So we, we, we had a, a mirror image, if you like. Um, so from this perspective, what we wanted to do was, how are we going to sell this? How are we going to get people to do this? Right? Because we couldn't, get it, we couldn't make it mandatory. Um, that wasn't going to fly. So what we did was we invited people to take part. And we went out to just over 30,000 people. I emailed them directly. Um, there's always a way. Um, and invited them to, to take part. And selling it to the fact that helping us to um, identify gaps um, in knowledge that we need to enhance our training um, and our communications plan that we have throughout the year. Um, but also for them to see how good they were, how much did they know themselves. Um, from a game approach. So we did a Bartley's Now article. We've got a network of champions that we do a newsletter with. Um, we do targeted emails to selected groups. So we've got um, our, high, uh, our hugs that we call them, high risk user groups, which are those people that um, uh, have uh, access to certain things within the business, sustainable, uh, maybe um, uh, in relation to the systems they use or the role that they have and we do provide work and skill cost again specific training for those colleagues um, and we sent them out this invite um, we had 2,800 people complete it um, which was great um, so just under 10% which is a, a great achievement yeah, and I think there's, there's an interesting point to make as well because mm. if, if you think that the original course was for 90,000 people. If you could mandate this, if somehow the powers that be said, yes, we'll, we'll make everyone do this, to be honest, it's the last thing in the world you want because how much data do you need to go through? If you've got 90,000 people <laughs> who, who are giving you all this, you really, you, you, you're gonna get a little bit swamped. So actually, the numbers that we ended up with is about 3,000, 2,500 is, yeah, is two perfect eight. for a, a representative sample mm. of the situation across the business without sort of getting lost in, in the long grass, yeah. really. Yeah. So, you know, in terms of what we discovered from all of this, uh, obviously you've got 2,500 people doing uh, 30 questions potentially three times. Yeah. I'm not going to do the maths standing here. Uh, There's a lot of data. There's a lot, lot of really valuable metrics which yeah. um, came back and, and allowed you to sort of make future plans, really, I guess. Yeah, thanks to Shamita. Yeah, um, pulling all together um, the reports um, from the Excel and, and breaking the data down. We were able to do that as a whole as a business. We were able to do that per topic, um, subtopic, and also... Um, Per business unit as well. So, when on once we completed this, so you'll see um, we've broken that down into our uh, three areas: 
international UK and um, VX. Um, obviously, people were assigned um, the number completed, and there were some that um, didn't complete it um, either um, at the end of the day, but you always get a, a, a portion of, of that as well. Following this, I did do an executive summary. Um, we That went to all of the uh, chief security office um, teams within the business so that they could see how well um, their own business units were doing in relation to each of these topics. Um, I've just provided a little bit of around what we've got from a resilience perspective. To be honest, um, as far as the data was confirmed, there were, there were only literally a couple of questions that uh, were over 25% uh, incorrect. Which is great news, isn't it? Really? Which is great news. However, um, the rest were more or less the same. So I obviously had to go down a bit deeper um, in relation to the percentages. So you'll see here we've got overall uh, for resilience was 89%, 87% confident and 2% not confident response rate, um, which showed a really high level of uh, retention in most of the areas. There were two questions, though, um, that required action. So they w I did an action plan for each of the, the areas um, where it was needed. There was some um, tightening up of the uh, questioning within the CSO mandatory training, but also within this as well. Um, it's just the wording. And sometimes um, when you, with the questions, it sometimes um, it's misinterpreted a different way. So you might have to make it a little bit longer um, for them, um, f for the context to be correct. So we, we, we had to arrange some of those. And from a physical security perspective, as I said, we don't test that in the CSO mandatory training, but we did test it here uh, purely, again, because we wanted to see the high knowledge, uh, sorry, the knowledge of retention. And again, uh, we had uh, 98 correct, 97 confident and 1% non-confident um, and again we just literally had two areas there um, and uh, they just they're really insignificant, we might change one of the, the questions slightly yeah. but apart from that it, there wasn't uh, many, so for us to go back to both the chief security office and to the uh, business to say we show you the difference the mandatory training is making. Uh, we can say that people are retaining that information. Obviously, from a business perspective, there are also other data. So for example, we were talking earlier about click rates for um, cyber for clicking, because we do fish me exercises um, every month as well. So um, you can't say that that's completely attributed to this because we do other communications throughout the year as well um, and other activities so we have security awareness month there are other things that we do periodically so you can't just say that it's attributed to this but you know it is a factor yeah um, one thing that I, I found very interesting about this process is I, th I think there, there's often a slight reticence to kind of lift the lid and find out what's underneath almost to, yeah. to, to do this kind of detailed level of analysis because <clears throat> you might find something you, you don't really want to see. And what was very, very interesting about this is, is to what extent the knowledge had been retained and to, to what extent people throughout the, the business were exhibiting the right behaviours and doing the right thing. Uh, and this has actually kind of reinforced that what you've been doing up to now has, has worked and has, has been successful. Um, Emma-Louise at various moments has talked about um, reporting and, and how that worked. Uh, when, we, when we sat down and, yeah. and started this, we discussed the hosting approach. Now, the, the beauty of this thing that we've developed is all of it can be transmitted via SCORM standards. So we've, we've done something a little bit clever that allows us to send uh, confidence ratings to a learning management system. So it's not like proprietor to Skillcast. We don't have to host this for it to work. Everything that Emma Louise got, she got from SuccessFactors, which is the LMS used by Barclays. Mm -hmm. uh, if we host it, we can make it prettier and a lot easier, I'd say. There's a bit of a manual process um, in interpreting the data. 
Uh, and well, really, they shouldn't be because you should be able to go to your LMS provider and say, this is what I want. The data's in there. If you can get it, <laughs> someone can make a report for you. So, but that's, a, that's a, another issue, perhaps. Uh, so it, it's, it's important to understand that um, what we've described today, with one exception, uh, which is a leaderboard, mm. um, we can provide a leaderboard if we host it. Uh, Third-party LMSs can't do that. But what was interesting about the, um, the approach for this is uh, you, you put the message out that there would be a leaderboard, and that was only put up at the end of the program. So when it had finished, yeah. a leaderboard was posted on the site that you want to drive traffic to yes. with all of the links to additional learning and everything that you need there. So actually, it's probably almost better than having a constantly updated leaderboard because it was able to focus attention at the end of the program where you wanted it to be yeah we were what i did was i actually emailed everybody the 2800 odd that that actually completed it um, and thanked them for taking part um, and um, to provide them with a little bit of the outcome but also then to say click here to go to the leaderboard um, i just got one piece of feedback to say could you not do one for um, the rest of the world and one for the us because they, they want a very specific one okay. um, and no, i didn't provide that um, but yeah so we did and it was the first it was the uh, top 50 we did um, that had got the 450 points so the maximum points that you could have got and of course you know there's scope to have prizes and things like this to, to yeah. add engagement. So, you know, in conclusion, what, what, what was achieved from this programme? So, um, Barclays, um, since 2016, has had what we call Barclays Security Programme, which is improving um, a number of things, controls, and obviously education awareness is one of those things that underpins that because you can make change, um, you can implement new things, but education and awareness will help to um, push people along the way, provide them with the education, the understanding of what we're doing. Um, we had an external um, rating, uh, an assessment with, um, it was LIDA, it's changed its name three times since we started, but it's, I'll say Cap Gemini because that is the latest name, um, and back in 2016. Um, and we actually scored a 1.75. And what it is, it's moving the dial from being reactive um, and we wanted to move to being proactive um, as a culture for uh, security within uh, Barclays. Um, we've just gone through the last assessment um, and we were aiming for a three. Um, we actually got a 3.25. And one of the things from that is showing uh, being proactive. And what we were able to do, and this is one of the things that has helped us achieve this, um, is that um, although you deliver training uh, which is fine um, it's about saying how do you then um, measure whether people are actually retaining that information but how are you using it and how are you improving the content of that training as well so what processes do you have in place for that um, and therefore see this is one of those now the beauty of this as well we will continue with this but it could be that we may use it in a slightly different way. So we may target our high risk users this time specifically and change the questions so that they um, match uh, more um, around the cyber uh, type of thing. Um, but now we've got this built um, and we know that um, it's a great concept. It's just about how else we may uh, use this going forward. It could be as well. So, for example, there are people that perhaps aren't doing things that they should be, um, and we can identify those people. And it could be that we may assign this to them to complete as a refresher. So that's one of the ways that we're looking. So they may do the mandatory training. It could be that there's been an incident, um, bad behavior, um, incorrect behavior. Um, and it could be then that we utilize this then um, as a refresher um, to test um, their understanding and then, um, you know, sort of go from there. Yeah, so we, we've, we, this has really contributed to us um, moving our dial from being uh, just reactive, just doing what we need to do, to actually moving that dial to being proactive. Great. Well, thank you so much for that, Emma-Louise. That's really interesting. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you very much.